Good afternoon and welcome to today's Civil Designer Software Technical Webinar. My name is Charles Scott. I'll later be joined by Andrew Cole and Cameron Boyle. As per usual, we will be recording today's webinar, which we will make available as a downloadable video for your reference. Please feel free to resize your welcome screen to your desired size. Send us any questions you may have during the presentations using the GoToWebinar floating dialog, which we'll have our regional consultants personally respond to after today, and download any of the five PDF handouts. Civil Design is renowned by many for having the best technical software support in the industry. Our support center is manned by technical professionals whose sole responsibility is to assist our existing clients with any Civil Designer software related inquiry. Over the past few years, we have added a few new support channels to the service, which have been very well received. Our oldest channel, the good old telephone system, will always remain in place, but has been superseded by our new electronic ticketing system. Registration is very quick and easy and only requires a valid email address. Tickets can either be opened via this page on our website or when you, the client, email helpdesk at nobase.ca.za. Such an email, when such an email is sent, a ticket is automatically generated and a unique ticket number is sent back to yourself. This number can then be used to track the ticket's progress and responses online once you have become a registered user. For your reference, we provide complete archives and history of all your support requests. Please note that any attachments submitted with a ticket must be in zip format or they will not be accepted and please include as much information as possible, which will assist in speeding up inquiry resolutions. In June this year, we launched what has become a very popular and informative series of technical webinars, providing an application overview of the functionality available in Civil Designer. We run our webinars using the GoToWebinar online web conferencing platform, which is a fantastic application. The recordings of these webinars are then uploaded to our Civil Designer Software YouTube page for your later reference. You'll also notice that this site has a number of additional feature related videos. Added to this, we have a knowledge based YouTube page hosting a number of how to videos. Lastly, downloadable software tech tips will continue to be compiled and made available on our webpage. Finally, please connect to our Civil Designer Software LinkedIn page, where we first post our new client showcase stories and new videos. I'm now going to hand over to Andrew Cole, who many of you in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape and Namibia know well as Civil Designer's Regional Support Consultant. Today, he'll be presenting a start to finish road design overview. Andrew, please take it away. Okay, I'm just starting with the new drawing setting up a project so I'm opening up a DWG drawing and I'm going to change the settings my background view settings firstly the palette to Alicad these to those Alicad palettes colors and then the background color to white I want to keep the palette colors and then I'm changing my drawing settings. I'm going to go set this drawing up at the moment. It's not properly coordinated. So I'm going to use the southern hemisphere and the set to known origin. So I type in the actual coordinate on the grid in view. I'm going to check that set to known box and then OK, OK. Then it's a zero jump, the shortcut to jump to one of those grid intersection points. And I'm just going to verify it with another zero jump <coughs> to this grid intersection point over here. And I'm happy with that. And then just file save as. So in this case, I'm going to use the DR4, which is um, what I want to use for my project. Just going to call it project and make it one. <coughs> okay, and then I'm saving that. Now I want to set up the project, so I'm going to the survey application, file project settings, checking the terrain box, and once again just the name, <coughs> project one, try not to make use of any of those other files with the different extensions, so we want a DTA to be created, 
importantly I have to set the allo band to 27 and OK and we're good to go so all ready to bring in my survey I'm just going to open up my control panel and then just rename surface one <coughs> one original ground okay you can switch the visibility of your surfaces on and off of that control center and then importing my survey now it's a single file it's this airport hub survey and let me just see it's that one there I'm just going to do the triangulation myself. So in this case, name, Y, X, and Z, finish. And bring it into that newly named surface one. Okay, and then just to validate or triangulate at least first in memory, surface one, it's fine. Okay, just check the triangulation and then we just want to validate that uh, just run that model validate okay just gonna save it first and then model validate okay All right, so line model scan successfully. Always nice to get that message. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm generating terrain generate contours at half a meter. And it should refresh. There it goes. Nice half meter contours. I just changed my display setting, the contour color. I'll use the gray pin 15 and then the highlighting will make pin 13. Switch on the highlighting <coughs> and OK. And maybe just switch off my triangles so you can see those contours. Nice neat contours of that river bed showing clearly in that area okay now just want to see what it looks like without all the CAD and we can look at the height shading so if I just do the order scale it's going to do the whole surface from high to low with height shading different colors let me switch off the points and have a look at that render view. This is our new 8.2 render view. You can rotate um, around the cursor. If you keep your control key in, just drag with the left mouse button and zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. We've got some new controls on the right in the panel there as well to zoom in and out and rotate and level out your, your site. So you can clearly see that river. Okay, so I'm just quitting out of that render view. Okay, and then just to switch off the height shading and just put on the normal shading for the terrain surface so that I can carry on <coughs> move on to the, the road design. For the road design I'm switching on the cadastral again. I'm going to need some additional layers. Um, these are from alignments that have been done as polylines. So I'm just going to bring in that from another drawing. It's the polyline layer. And I've just loaded the layer. There's two of them um, going to design a dual carriageway so change to my roads and I need to select the road file to work with as a default we have that road one this is the new 8.2 road control panel some new icons and 
just going to rename this um, road one in the road control panel to main road. I'm setting it up to the string road. And then I need to select a template. Um, this is a dual carriageway template. You can see we've got center line to pivot, pivot to median break point, pivot to road edge. So pivot um, to median, just leaving it zero. We've got curbs on everything. Maybe just my layers, I need to rename our road layer. So I'm going to call that Rural Natural Ground NGL. And then layer two would be my final design layer. And that would be populated at the base and design layers at the bottom. Okay. And then we should be good to go. I'm going to be using the regression function to extract these alignments. So just to get it done a bit quicker, I'm going to run from that polyline using the alignment regression function and extract the horizontal. So it's alignment, regression, extract alignments, horizontal and vertical. With this dual carriageway, that's going to be my medium, negative 3.55 on the left, 3.55 on the right. Extracting these from CAD entities, select the CAD polyline, and yes, do my coordination. Okay. Extract my ground 50 50, it's wider than normal. Here my cross section runs. Those are the extracted ground cross sections. This terrain is relatively flat. I don't want to extract pivot lines from CAD, no. I'm just going to extract that from the template that was specified in the road control panel. <coughs> Okay, and let the road recalculate. Let's let the road expert on. So, as soon as we have the alignments, the program can recalculate the road. Um, if you just want to have a look at those cross sections, section graphical edit, just click on one of the cross sections, you can see the dual carriageway with those curbs the road edge and the median. Just page up and page down to pan through the cross sections. Okay. And that's the road shading that was activated. The road string shading with the island in the middle. Okay, there is a widening that I want to show you. Um, so this is the bus widening and to do that I'm going to use that new road control center extract strings tab so I just want to bring in these lines I've got the bus widening um, it'll be the median and the road edge layer so I'm just loading those two road layers another CAD drawing which had it in so you can see those lines and I'm just going to use the, the edges in this case so I want to select the roads section of the control panel and then extract strings <coughs> okay you can see all my road strings that are in Play, and then I'm going to use the left road edge, select the CAD entities to target, which would be that polyline over here. I just have to right click, extract string, and then the same for the right road edge. Okay, extract string. The extraction settings, um, so from the current crossfall, you've got a few options there on what to do. I'm just going to use 
the edge control from the edge control spreadsheet information and then recalculate road <coughs> so once it's highlighted in red it's allowed um, it's telling you you can recalculate this area is pretty flat so the banks are going to be fairly small in this section okay so you can see my bus widening there the bus lanes okay then what I want to do is <coughs> create another road to do some intersections and show you the new road segmentation so I'm just gonna put in a road name this is new road file I'm just calling it Wellington Road and let's check my palette sorry my template yep got one that I saved earlier that I want to use for this single carriageway road that looks fine those came through the road layers came through from the RCP file that road control panel file okay and that's the polyline so once again I'm just going to use for this single carriageway the regression function extract alignments horizontal vertical and select the CAD polyline and let it run <coughs> with the road expert um, running through all the design steps just minimize my cross sections vertical alignment has been extracted so that vertical alignment just um, runs along the extracted ground surface so in this case it's relatively close to the ground okay, as you can see that is a road that runs either side of my um, main road that dual carriageway we designed earlier so what we're going to do is, this is a new to Civil Designer 8.2, is to segment the road. just picks up the end change, but you can graphically indicate where you want to split the road. And that's about change 730, I accept. It's going to segment the road, allowing us to then do those intersections where previously we had to design two separate roads. So this is... Um, an improvement for Civil Designer 8.2. Okay, just read it recalculate. You can see if I select that road, you can see it's a separate road or segment. So the road has been segmented and, and broken up into two sections. I can now add the intersection selecting the intersecting road, the main road. And then set my. I've got a saved um, intersection file, so I just set my coordination interval to one. This um, intersection file that I've just loaded has got some islands, divider islands built into it. Okay. For the left and the right curve, so you're always looking standing in the main road looking down the intersecting road as far as left and right that naming convention for your bell mails is concerned okay so we're running through that intersection calculation and it's got um, just a central radius and then the divider islands so there that first one is done I'm just going to add another junction at the top um, so it's the top segmented road and then the main road so left and right you can see the naming convention and I've got a intersection file that I'm going to load still set to one meter and then OK and OK Just print enter if you want to not have to click on that dialog. 
you can also switch those dialogs off and not show them and close the output window to speed things up but as is these intersection calculations are pretty quick okay and then just to show you there's the segmented road okay what I'm going to do now is just that island in the middle I'm going to have to remove it that chain edge range is about from 42 to 4220 if I go one chain edge before that and then to 4220 so it'll reintroduce my curbs so I'm just copying those curbs to the median okay so this is purely just to remove those curbs for that 20 meter section and that would need to be on the left and the right curbs just copy and paste that in again to the same number of cells and I can just close this and let the road recalculate just need to apply that template now from the edge level data you can see there the island has been removed or the curbs um, linked to the island the median island okay you can see that's my Wellington Road the segmented road <coughs> just to get those plan view lines I'm just going to copy from Wellington and copy that to the other roads as well the same plan layout and settings for all our roads okay I'm switching off the cadastral I want to do a render view and a fly through we've got some new functionality built into the render view um, <clears throat> as far as the terrain and environment can do some height shading of the terrain and um, show contours that sort of thing in your render view okay so you can neatly see those islands that are put in the divider island the render view is very useful for design verification and for presentation purposes <coughs> Okay, so what I want to do is a fly through. So in the new render, you can select a road and you can actually fly along the road. So you've got some buttons here to move your view left and right, up and down. You can increase and decrease your speed. The shortcuts for those would be the left and up and down arrow key and then the plus and minus side on your numeric, uh, plus and minus sign on your numeric keypad to slow down and to speed up so if, if you want to reverse you can actually just press the decrease or the negative sign and you'll go into negative speed which will make you reverse okay and then if I want to unlock the view the shortcut for that is B then you can look around just moving your cursor so based on your cursor position that's the view that you're going to be looking at okay just moving forward slightly as far as my speed goes and then going negative decreasing the speed so reversing a bit okay and then you can also change so if I escape out of the um, if I escape out of this current view I would then have an option to select um, another road so the important thing is to actually <coughs> click on the road so I'm just going to escape out of it now okay and then I want to right click in that vicinity of this in road and then you can see the fly along road entity and then off we go 
along that new road entity. And once again, I'm just going up arrow plus sign to increase my speed. Okay. So very useful, <coughs> as I said, for presentation and for um, design verification. So just V to, to unlock again. If I want to change, in this case, I actually want to go back down the road a bit. So if I move um, the knob, just going with the negative, the decreasing the speed. So I'm actually going in the reverse direction and just looking in the direction of my cursor. So some nice improvements as far as the, the fly-through. You can still do the traditional fly-through where you define your paths um, either on existing road or from CAD entities. Okay, so I'm going to escape out of the render view. <coughs> and we're going to start a new road. Um, I'm going to add another road just to show you some crossing services. Um, Okay, so the new road file, I think that road template should be fine. Okay, and then there's a polyline, so just to get the alignment in again quickly, I'm going to use that regression function again, extract alignments, horizontal and vertical. CAD entities, I select the polyline and OK, OK. I'm just going to let the road expert run through, extracting the ground cross sections and applying the default conditions, the lane widths, the cross falls from the road control panel. Okay, so there's my new road. I just want to do, bring in some existing services, so some um, CAD layers that I've got. Um, so this is the existing sewer line. If I just load those layers. There's a couple of ways you could do this. Um, there's a crossing services database that we create, which you can then view in 3D or you can um, show it in your cross sections. So those are, and it's existing sewer line with text for diameters. You got your line and then your in, sorry, your invert levels at the start and end. So I'm going to use this import from drawing option for the crossing services. I'm going to call it sewer and then I'm picking up the invert levels from that CAD layer, the lines from the sewer lines and then the diameter from that existing sewer diameter CAD layer. Okay, the program will just run through that and then if I look at the crossing services editor See that spreadsheet is now populated with all those links. And let's just have a look at the invert levels that it's picked up. Let's drag that a bit wider. Okay. And you can see the invert levels, the pipe diameters, the type I've just duplicated in there as well. So those crossing services you'd be able to view in your cross sections and you could plot those in your cross sections as well. It just needs to be activated so it's the crossing service and the sewer in this case. And there you can see it on a page up and down along the road. You'd also be able to, to view that in, in the render view. So if I close the, the cross section, um, 
can switch those CAD layers off so that we can actually see that we are viewing the um, crossing service from the display settings. So it's displaying as 3D entities. Okay, so just render view. I just want to show you that it is visible. Any crossing service that you bring in, you can switch the visibility on and off. Okay, so there's my road and there's that existing sewer line running just parallel to it. If I fly along the road just quickly just to show you, if I just move off to the right, the arrow keys, and you see there's the sewer line coming into view now. Okay, I don't want to too close just gonna get out of the road back onto the road at least okay so just to show you that it would be visible in the fly through okay so that was a crossing service um, it's existing service that we've picked up okay then just to run through the plot routine I'm going to generate a plot um, for the intersection uh, between my main road and that intersecting road, create a paper space layout and just make sure we're happy with the position. I right click quit and I'm just going to put on the Belmouth table, which will give you all points around each Belmouth with the associated levels and coordinates in the table the road intersection label list okay so pretty neat all your setting out data for your bar mouths and that is built into our plan sheet file Okay, I just want to do a long section, so I'm just going to use that Wellington Road and then the single carriageway extended sheet file. These are built in plotting templates, so once again, create a layout. Just my road's about 1250 meters, so I'm going to use a scale of 1250 horizontally, 100 vertically should be fine. There's my long section. Okay, so built into that long section sheet file would be your levels, your super elevation, etc. Okay, and then just also the cross sections. I'm plotting with the cross section sheet file. Once again, creating a layout and it's gonna do the first one just to show you that it is possible. Okay, so there are my cross sections plotted from the sheet file. The sheet files are fully customizable so you can set up the sheet files with your own title blocks. <coughs> okay, and then just the volume calculations can be done quickly as well. Just my Area volume, mass or volume, set my topsoil stripping and my compaction. And we can calculate and then results to output. Okay. So nice quick mass or calculations taking topsoil stripping and compaction into consideration, the layer works, so all your pavement layer works. Nice and quick. It gives you cut and full prep areas and then your total layer work volumes and then just curb quantities quickly. 
You can specify the change range as well as different ranges of curve radio with which to report the curve quantities. The curve quantities are reported in linear meters, but you can also build in curve area and volume calculations if needed. The next function that I'm going to have a look at is the exporting of your civil design and project data in the standardized BIM IFC file format. We run this out of the CAD application. It's file import export to IFC file and select which parts of the project you want to export. In this case, I'm exporting the two roads, the two intersection roads. The IFC or Industry Foundation class file is a standardized BIM file for transferring design data between design packages. And we've made sure that we're up to date with the latest um, design file structures. Okay, so my IFC export is now done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this BIM Viewer application. It's a BIM Vision, just a freeware BIM Viewer. And then once that's launched, I'm going to open up that IFC file that we've just exported out of Civil Design. So open the Project 1 IFC file. That'll load up, and then we should be able to view exactly what we had in our soul designer project so there you have the intersection with the islands so the ifc file will export the design data with all the associated attributes etc so the ifc is the the way to go as far as exporting transferring data between design packages so that's it, I've exited out of the BIM viewer and I'm back in my civil designer project. And that's all I have for you right now. Thank you for watching this presentation. Back to you, Charles. Thank you very much, Andrew. That was great. I'll now be handing over to Cameron Boyle, who many of you in Gauteng, Limpopo, the Northwest and Botswana will know well. Cameron will be presenting how to link an external water consumption database in Civil Designer's Water Module. Cameron, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Charles. Hi, everybody. My name is Cameron. I'd like to show you how you go about using the consumption function inside the water module of Civil Designer. The objective here is to link external water consumption and database figures, utilize them in Civil Designer, and then ask Civil Designer to update the demands in your water network. I'm going to start off by opening up a drawing. You can go and specify which drawing extension to use. This particular drawing already has the water module active. So essentially in front of me I've got a CAD drawing the CAD drawing's got some stand numbers, I've got some cadastral layouts, some street names, and then the blue line represents my water network. I'm going to start off by going to Consumption, Open Consumption Database. Here you would go and specify a particular name, and you can go and create many different databases and use it in a single project. If I go to my consumption table, you'll see that at this stage I don't have information. I need to import that information. I do so by going to consumption, import municipal data. I can go and browse for my file. I'm going to use a CSV file, but you can of course go and use any type of text file. It's a comma delimited file and my column names are in row one as indicated. Click on next. Right now we are aware of the fact that you might not have all this information. So we make it rather easy for you. You can go and specify only a reference number, reading dates for your consumption figures, and then the actual consumption. So with those three columns active, 
you can then use the consumption function. I'm going to take it further. I'm going to go and bring in a stand number, the street name, street number, as well as a category. Now, a category is very handy to have. Um, it would include things like household, complex, industrial, commercial. When you bring in your information, then you can actually go and compare your figures according to the categories. You can also bring in additional fields. This particular file has 475 records. If I show you what the records look like, I go to, back to my consumption table and there's the 475 stands in this case. So if I go and click on a stand, this information at the bottom is applicable to that stand. Each stand has 27 readings over a period of 27 months. You'll also notice on the right hand side here, I don't have coordinates. You can bring in GPS coordinates. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a CAD layer and then our civil designer to bring in the coordinates via a CAD layer. So I'm going to go and close this. I'm going to go and use the coordinate from stand numbers. But before I do that, I'm actually going to show you that the stand number is on a particular layer. Stand numbers. So bearing that in mind, and looking at what my stands look like at the moment, I'm going to go to consumption coordinate from stand numbers. Here I go and specify which layer to work with. Once I've gone and clicked on import, you'll find that these stands will have a little red diamond There they are. This indicates to the designer that we have the coordinates for those stands. Now at this stage, I'm not quite sure where these stands are getting their water supply from. Fortunately, Civil Designer has the option to go and allocate connection points. So the objective here is to use that diamond as an indication and then go and put in a search distance of let's say 100 meters. It will then go and pick up the closest water main line and allocate the water supply from that main line. In this case, I've got 14 consumers that were rejected with this function. All right, so there you can see the stands. They've all got their water supplies from the closest main line. Now, to find those stands that weren't allocated main line, I'm going to use the consumption database to my advantage. At the bottom, I can go and specify a filter, and in this case, I'm going to say too far from the network. So these are the stands that we're not able to connect to the main line because they fall further than 100 meters. So if I were to go and select a stand, I can then go and select show, and Civil Designer will then zoom into the area. You'll also find that at this stage, I now have my coordinates. Next up, I'm going to go and look at a summary graph. So at the bottom here, you can go and specify your filter. You can go and specify a period. And you can go and specify the category that I pointed out to you previously. In this case, I'm going to go and focus on complex. So if you look at the difference between the total consumption and the consumption per connection, you'll see there's quite a difference at the beginning of 2015. Let's look at this a bit closer. If I were to go back to my consumption database, and on the bottom here, I go and specify a complex. You'll see that in total, we have three complexes in this network. Now, if I look at the dates, I find that the last complex there 
The reading only started in August of 2015. And that is why there's a difference between the summary graphs. Now, beforehand, what I've done is I've gone to my display settings. I've gone to my water nodes. And over here, I've gone and specified I want discharge. I've also taken it a bit further and gone and put in 0.3 because I want three decimal places. So using this consumption database, I can now ask civil designer to go and update my demands. Here I can go and specify what time period I'd like to use, let's say 24 months. And then I can ask civil designer to update my demands. There they are. Now, before I say goodbye to you, there's a couple of questions that our clients have asked. First question is, can GPS coordinates be imported? Yes, you can. You can import latitude, longitude coordinates. Can you have more than one meter per stand? Yes. If I were to go to consumption, consumption table, and I go and select a particular stand, you'll see that at the bottom there, you've got the option of a serial number. So if you've got a very big stand, let's say it's an industrial stand that has more than one meter, you can then have numerous serial numbers. Another question here, can you import data into the same database? Absolutely. Let me show you where. If I go back to consumption, I go to import municipal data, there I can go and browse for another file. If we find that that second file has duplicate records, Civil Designer won't bring in the duplicate information. Can you have numerous consumption databases? Yes, you can. If I were to go back to consumption, open consumption database, the program informs me that the consumption base is already open. Would you like to close it and open up another one? I would say yes, and I would go and select another database. So one project can have numerous databases. Something else worthwhile mentioning, if I don't want a pipe to be included when I use the allocate connection points function, then I could simply go and click on the pipe. I could go to data and I could go and put in that particular pipe on its own group. And I could go and switch off that group before I use the function. And that's about it, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for your time. Charles, back to you. Thank you, Cameron and Andrew. That was fantastic. And a special thank you to all our webinar attendees this afternoon. We're planning our next webinar for the 2nd of November. Please watch your inbox for the invitations. Please email us using info at civildesigner.com should you wish to arrange an on-site or online focused interactive user group for your individual team or office covering any of the functionality demonstrated today or any suggestions for our next webinar. We'll leave the session open for the next 30 minutes should you wish to send us any questions with regards to Andrew or Cameron's software presentation. Have a great weekend. Please remember to ensure you're always using the latest version of Civil Designer, version 8.1 Build 6. Take care and goodbye from Civil Designer.